Hey everybody, Meg Ruler 31 back here from FSI DFS. I am going to cover the Tale of Two Slates. I am going to cover quickly the three game slate that starts um, today at, I believe, 105. It's an early slate. It's got two games around one o'clock and then one game, I think, later in the afternoon, three o'clock. So hopefully we've got the lineups for all of those before that locks. And then it's actually a rather early night in baseball tonight. You get five extra minutes with your lineups because um, lock is not till 710. But I think the latest game tonight is like 840 or 940. So it's not like there's like a late, late West Coast games and there's only five games on the main slate. So the early slate is really nice and easy. There's um, some clear pitchers to play. There's um, some offenses that make um, some really good stacks. And then when you get to the main slate, the pitchers are almost to the point where it's like, I've got to play somebody. And um, there are some offenses, but there's really nothing like that clear that really stands out. It might be a, a good night if um, just a, you know, play in some dollar GPPs, not go like a ton of cash, not use like five, 10% of your bankroll like uh, you would on a normal night because it, tonight could be very unpredictable. The other thing I want to cover quickly is I was a little bit surprised because I thought this was me like normal years. I know last year with COVID, the baseball season was a little bit different. Um, but I thought that there was going to be September call-ups like normal. So what used to happen is baseball rosters used to be 25 man and then September 1st, they used to expand to 40 man uh, not everybody would take advantage of this but a lot of teams would bring in some younger guys and give them a shot if they're out of contention or um, playoff contenders would go to like six man rotations they go more matchup um, out of the bullpen um, they'd have more pinch hitting options there uh, kick the tires on some of these prospects that they have in the organization but this year the regular roster was 26 man it's only going to expand to 28 so they're only going to be able to add two more people now there are some people out there i've got my eyes on and i'll share my list with mckinley 412 so if um there's any of these guys that come out that look like they're going to be um really good prospects in a game and really cheap and underpriced then uh, we'll give you a heads up on that so Let's start with the day slate. I think it's pretty simple. You've got um, three games. You have, let's see here. We have, and the weather looks good on all these ones. So, I mean, after yesterday with all that rain um, in the east, hopefully if you're anywhere, I had to drive my daughter to college in Baltimore from Northern Pennsylvania and had to go through it and then back up through it. And it was not fun, but not as bad as they got in New York City and um, New Jersey. So, you know, anywhere across the nation, if you were affected by this, my thoughts are with you and uh, hopefully we can rebuild and get back to normal again. Uh, but weather looks good this weekend. So uh, let's get to it. So we have Oakland and Detroit, you have Montas and Manning. We have um, next game would be, why is it freezing? I am so sorry. There we go. First game is Philly at Washington. Um, then that's a 105, then Oakland at Detroit. And we have the later game at 345 is San Francisco at Milwaukee. So I think the clear pitchers here are Nola for the Phillies and Montas for Oakland. They're reasonably priced too. Nola is only 9.5 and Montas is um, 8.4. If you want to um, go a little bit higher, Logan Webb is decent also. So you've got three um, pitchers to pick from. I think personally, I'm going to build my lineups with uh, Matas and Nola. And then I think I'm going to definitely stack the A's. I think against Manning, they have the highest total. So I'm looking at taking Harrison and Marte and I think I'm going, I'm going to play Olsen there. I'm going to skip Chapman. I'm going to go Jed Lowry. And I think for catcher, I am going to play um, Marchin from Philly because he's only 2-5. Now, this, if he doesn't start, 
the lowest catcher might be three, five. So I might have to adjust what I'm doing, but I think I'm only going to take four A's there just pricing wise. So I want those two pitchers. If you can get a fifth guy in, um, there is um, a chance that Tony Kemp is not in because I think he's a little bit um, banged up. So, you know, if there's a cheap replacement for him and one of the guys that I've been kind of looking at, and this sounds like more like a superhero than um, a major league baseball player is uh, Sky Bolt for the athletics. So if you see him in the lineup, then he's one that I'd definitely be interested in. Um, he's a great young prospect there. And if Kemp can't play and they're a little bit stretched to try to um, fill outfield spots and, you know, he's called up and in the lineup, then he's somebody that I would look at there. But if you play the lineup of Montas Nola, Marchin, the Phillies catcher, and then you take Olsen, Lowry, Harrison at shortstop, and then Marte in the outfield, the three spots left are third base and two outfield spots. And the right-handed batters of um, San Francisco are in a really great spot. And there's three of them that fit perfectly in that lineup. Like I said, the other option would be to put Philly for your stack. So again, starting the same way, I'm taking Montas, Nola, and Martin, and then uh, I take Segura at second. I'm going to take um, Galvis. Hopefully he's like leading off or hitting up higher at shortstop, Harper and McCutcheon. So that's a five man because the catcher is from Philly. And then again, San Francisco fills out the stack really nicely. Um, so, and they're all right-handed batters and, um, that should work. If not, then there's plenty of one-off stuff to look at. So let's move on to this evening slate. And like I said, this one's going to be a tough one. First game you have, uh, Boston and you have the Tampa Bay Rays. You have Eduardo Rodriguez and uh, Shane McClanahan. I'm just not a believer in Shane McClan. I know he's got some K upside against this Boston lineup. Um, Xander's out now with uh, COVID. Uh, you still have uh, Kiki and um, some other guys out with, with COVID. Maybe more guys test positive. Let's hope it doesn't turn into a Yankee situation where they keep on losing people. Even though I'm a Yankees fan, I really don't want to see people getting sick with COVID and, and missing, you know, baseball or just being sick in general. So but you might see like, you know, some call-ups here, some, some cheap guys. So they're not as strong. So I can see with McClanahan, but I don't tend one. And I know it's in the context of the slate that they think he's going to be the best pitcher and they need to price him up. But for me, that that's way too high. Um, Red Sox are still good. There's still some really good guys in here against left-handed pitching, even like taking like Schwarber and um, Devers against them. I still, they're very good sometimes still against left-handed pitching. So I'm okay if you want to play McClanahan, but I think I'm going to prioritize different and not play 10-1 for him. Eduardo Rodriguez is a little bit risky. Also, Tampa Bay does have some K upside. They haven't been striking him out as much. Like, Sale didn't get too many strikeouts against them. Um, recently, there's a, it's a lefty against a right-handed lineup that's pretty strong. So um, I think he's okay. I kind of like him a little bit better than McClanahan just with the pricing. But I don't know if I'll play either of these pitchers in cash. I mean, see, this is where like the dilemma starts. Batting wise, I think you know if McClanahan is one of the highest um, owned pitchers on the slate, it does make a lot of sense to to take and to uh, play the Red Sox against them. And then I think Tampa Bay against Eduardo Rodriguez works too. But I think, you know, Tampa Bay, I could see in cash. Uh, Boston, I think, is going to be the top GPP stack. You have the New York Mets against the Miami Marlins. This one I'm quite interested in because I know Yankee Stadium got flooded. I know, like, um, Flushing Meadows got flooded where they're playing the U.S. Open. So I don't know how City Field made out with that, if they can get it dried out and ready by 10, 7, 10 tonight to be able to play baseball. And so just keep an eye on this. This game might be postponed. I think, you know, right now it looks like everything is ready to go for it. I haven't heard anything officially that it's going to be postponed, but I just say, just keep that in the back of your mind. So here we have Zach Thompson and Carlos Carrasco. Carlos Carrasco is working his way back into the rotation. He's had his ups and downs, but I think the context of the slate, he might be one of the most popular pitchers just because he's going against Miami and he's only 8K. So he could be very, very high owned. 
Uh, Zach Thomas on the other side, I like him, but he doesn't go deep enough into games. He does have K upside. The Mets are starting to turn it around a little bit, but um, still, I think, you know, he has some merit, but however, they sometimes throw an opener, like you might see Nieder or somebody kind of open before him, and there have been times where he's been listed on the slate, and then, like, two hours before lineup, it's somebody else, like Nieder or somebody different pitching, so I'm um, kind of kind of avoid the Zach Thomas situation. Bats-wise, um, Mets, like I said, I think they make a cheap GPP stack, but I don't think, you know, their primary cash um pricing wise they're rather cheap everybody's under 5k um even Alonzo's down to like four or five so you know I, I think there there are decent hitters here uh I think you know if you're playing like a 20 man you know with, on a five game slate they definitely make sense this stack um Miami I also think is a great leverage stack because I think uh, I don't know if you can find five guys on here that you like enough to play against Carrasco but I think there's definitely, you know, if he has one of those games where he struggles, that they could be um, a low on stack if everybody's going with Carrasco's pitcher. Now we really fall to the bottom of the dumpster here. We have Pittsburgh against um, Chicago Cubs. This is almost like a minor league team versus a minor league team. You have Mitch Keller versus Keegan Thompson. And I think Mitch Keller makes sense also as maybe an SP2 if you want somebody cheap just against this Cubs lineup. And even some of these Cubs that I was really liking uh, when they first started out, like after they traded everybody, like Bote and um, Contreras are now on like the IL with um, hopefully their real injuries and the Cubs aren't just like trying to stash them and, you know, for the rest of the year and playing games with that. But anyways, in this Pittsburgh lineup, there's really not that great of hitters either. So I think Mitch Keller is viable. The wind is blowing in almost 10 miles per hour. So that should help like mitigate any power that's left in this club's lineup. So Keegan Thompson on the other side, he doesn't go deep enough. I would, I, he's on my fate list for tonight. So I would not play him, but you could, you know, if you want to stack Pittsburgh or if you want to stack the Cubs again, five game slate, anything works here. If you want to take some cheap bats here to fill in with, um, cause we're going to get two more games for this. We're going to talk about Coors Field to try to get um, a Braves or a Colorado stack. And definitely that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I think there's some useful pieces from this game to fill in around, but I don't think that these are like a primary place you want to go. The total is probably going to be relatively low also with the wind blowing in. Next, we have the Cleveland Indians and the Kansas City Royals. We have Tristan McKenzie against Mike Miner. Uh, McKenzie, I think, is going to be one of the highest known pitchers on the slate, and I don't really argue with that. At 9-3, I think I like him. I think he's more stable than Erod, even though he's in the matchup, even though he's, you know, had some erratic times throughout the season. Um, recently, he's been better. Mike Miner, uh, Cleveland's actually kind of putting it together. So I, I think he makes sense for a cheap SP2. I'd rather save a thousand and just drop down to Keller against the Cubs. But I wouldn't argue against anybody that wants to play minor. If minor gets to start, because it's been, I think he's been scheduled to start also like Zach Thompson for the um, Marlins for like three or, or Thomas for like three or four starts every so often. And then do like you get to an hour before lock and it's a different pitcher. So that's major league baseball for you. So um, McKenzie, like I said, definitely like here, uh, Kansas city. I think, you know, maybe some contrarian ones, maybe like Perez against him. He has given up some long balls and Perez is having an amazing series season out of the catcher spot. Um, but if you look at like probably the rest of this lineup, maybe Mayfield, maybe Lopez, the lefty righty matchup, but really, really not super excited about any Kansas city Royals here, but again, small slate, you know, if you're playing multi-entry, you're probably going to stack every single team anyways. And then um, on the Cleveland side of it. Yeah. I definitely like some, some pieces here. It's a, they get a lefty. They've um, a lot of right-handed power bats here. Like, for Mel Reyes is like a monster usually against left-handed pitching. Jose Ramirez, Ramirez, Rosario, Straw, even Harold Ramirez um, batting in the fifth spot, really cheap. Um, Owen Miller, like so, and Hedges I think is one of my is my favorite catcher that I'm going to play on this slate. I think I'm just going to lock him into my um, lineup there at a two-five righty lefty matchup. I like that. 
okay, finally we come to Coors Field. And here's the headache. So like I said, it's an early game. It's 840. So hopefully with the proximity of lock time at 710 for the main slate, we will have the lineups and have an idea of what's going on here. But there's about a 40% chance of rain. So of course, you know, the best matchup and the, the one thing that we might be able to actually lock into on this slate is up in the air due to weather. Of course, you have Tuki Chisant, who is an awesome young pitcher who is going to be a stud someday. He's got electric stuff, K upside, but he throws a um, his pitch selection. Um, he likes to throw at batters low. So problem with that is um, in this air in Coors Field that some of those, if he's used to trying to get um, – the low side of the plate and I forget if, if it's like a cutter or sinker or whatever he throws um, there. If it stays elevated, that ends up right in the strike zone. And then these Colorado batters can just like, you know, take it right out of the yard uh, winds like only like eight miles per hour blown across. So like, it's not really a factor there, but then again, like with this rain, hopefully this game um, gets played, but Atlanta, I think makes sense. If this game is going to play as the top stack, Chichen Gonzalez is one of the poorest pitchers on in baseball. Um, out of the Rockies, I think he's the worst pitcher on their staff. Uh, we've targeted him many times this season and it's worked out well. So Jack Peterson leading off at three, nine is, is decent. Solaire at four K. Um, I think, uh, you might see Adriana, um, hit higher in the lineup. And, and I think Adriana might be the, the complete key to this slate simply because he's two K and if he gets a chance, because Albies is going to be out. So if he cracks the lineup, uh, you know, they move in plays like second base, then, and especially if like they move him up because he's a switch hitter, I mean, that would be outstanding. Um, but even if he bats eighth, you know, I'll, I'll take it there. Um, but I think the Braves are going to be the most popular stack. So, and if Adriana is there, then he might be the highest on batter on the slate of 2K if he's hitting up in the lineup, or even if you cracks lineup, a 2K guy who's a switch hitter, who's a decent hitter um, at Coors Field against Chichi Gonzalez, then I think a lot of people are going to jump right on that. The Rockies, I think, are a little bit more difficult. Their pricing is for Coors Field. They have um, only two guys below 4K, so it's a very expensive stack um, against Trusant. And I think it'd be more contrarian um, because I think, you know, some people might look at Trisana 8K against uh, the Rockies and think, um, you know, he might be able to have some K upside and, and play him there. I don't think, you know, he'll be as popular as Carrasco or um, Tristan McKenzie, but I think, you know, he might have some ownership. So that will keep the Rockies and their pricing down. So I think there are, um, they might be hard to play in cash, but I think if you take some chances on some pitchers, you can get them in a, in a nice uh, GPP. So let's look at lineup builds here quickly. Like I said, I think I really want to take um, and use Atlanta. So I think I'm going to take McKenzie as my SP1. And then I think I'm going to take Keller as my SP2. But I think really what you want to do is this is a night is just lock in the first pitcher that you like. So if it's Erod, if it's McKenzie, if it's McLaren, then lock that pitcher in. Then get the Braves bats that you want. So again, I think I'm going to hit Hedges at catchers because he's only 2 2. And I like the splits matchup there. There are some other guys that are 2 2 that should start. So you should be able to save on catcher. And then I'm going to take Freeman. Riley, I don't know if I want Swanson. He's batting projected bat six. He's if I can save some money there, I might just skip over him. Peterson, I like Solera, I like and then Adriana if he is available. The other thing that you could do is if you want to drop Riley and play Adriana at third, then you can put Swanson in there, and you can play um, the Arnold at catcher if he's in the lineup there. Uh, if you want to pay up from hedges, but I really think, you know, the cheapest way to go is to just take Freeman, Riley, Peterson, Solaire, then decide if you want Adriana or if you want to um, play Swanson at shortstop. 
So after you've done that, then you'll see like how much you have left for your SP2 and pretty much know which range um, you want to go to. If if you play those four, like you can get up, you can get to like McLaren and McKenzie. You can get uh, McKenzie and Erod if you play Adrianza in there. And then there are some, like I said, look at that Pittsburgh game and that Chicago game and like Mets, Marlins. There are so many value bats that you can throw in there and be able to uh, – finish off your stack so that's where i'm going like i said sorry it's such a tough slate but the early slate looks like it's going to be a good one there's some um, to stack and hopefully the phillies and the a's come through and those uh, pitchers and the one-offs they're the three man mini stack we're taking from san francisco and then hopefully this course game plays give us some bats but if not then i guess i'm going to be looking at probably the cleveland indians to stack there or i'll be taking some um of the bats in like the Boston and the Tampa Bay game. So I'm Mega Ruler 31. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments, or you can reach out to me at Twitter at Mega Ruler 31. And um, you know, if you have any questions, especially if like things radically change for the slate, if there's more COVID issues, if a pitcher gets scratched, if um, you know, a situation changes, and you know, sometimes you go look at this video, you think you know where you want to go, and then things change rapidly and you need some advice. So reach out to us. We'll see what we can do to help you. Appreciate it. Give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.